everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you this really fun card. This was sent as a request by Julie and she sent me a picture which was by Trinoose Crafty Creations. When I went to her blog, without having to scroll for quite some time, I was unable to find the card. So I've just gone by her picture. But I have made this card before just as a single this one and I think it folded down to maybe like a four by six size and I'll link that one up here so I have made the fold before but I really loved the double version now this one all folds down to a six by six size you can see there so that will fit into a six by six envelope or box envelope depending on how much dimension you add to this I've used some beautiful papers which I'll show you in a moment you can see all of the folds there it's very easy I've got a template that I've put together to show you as well I think it's going to be a great one for many occasions. This is a thank you card. And then on the back, you've got space there to be able to write your message. The gorgeous papers and the product that I'm using today are from Craft Session Co. This is on the border. So I've taken the thank you from the small little sentiments here. And then the paper packs. So I've used the 8x8, which has all like your edge detail. And you also have these sheets where you can cut the floral images out there but I've used those borders for each side here and then the actual flowers in the center here if I just bring it up a bit close you can see all that detail it's so pretty that's from the A4 one here so if you're someone who doesn't like to color or stamp your images you have these sheets here I think there's four sheets of each so you can just cut those out or if you've got a scan and cut you could run that through and it will cut it for you and that's it's 190 GSM, you get 24 sheets there, so you've got plenty to keep you going. And then I just finished off with some of my accent glaze in the centres there. I didn't want to take away from the colour of the flowers, but I just loved that shine and that extra bit of detail and dimension that it adds to the card. So it's a really fun style and it stands up perfectly as well. So let me show you how to make it. You want a piece of 12 by 6 and along the long side you're going to score it three, four and a half seven and a half and nine then fold over the nine inch score line okay and then you just want to pop it back in your scoreboard so that fold is along the top and you could use just the same stylus actually you just want to mark at three inches just put a little marker there okay then open it back up and from that marker score down to the other score line that will be the three inch score line that you did originally Basically, you just want to have a score line that runs through the middle, so between the three and the nine inch score line. Okay, so what I've done is I've just made this template here. Don't be alarmed with all these score lines. I promise you it's very easy, but I just thought it'd be a bit easier to talk through on this rather than showing you on this pink card here. So right now you should have your three, four and a half, seven and a half and nine score lines. And then that score line that you've done through the middle. So a score line at three inches between the three and the nine inch score line. What we're next gonna do is we're gonna score from the top here all the way down to the bottom. And again, we're gonna score from this one all the way down. And then we're gonna add these score lines here. So if you break it down, you've got a big cross and then you've got this square. And that's what we're gonna add. We're then gonna cut across here. That's what the pink represents. There's just one cut line through there, but I think it's easier to score first because you can score right across here. Whereas if you cut it, you'll probably have to just score down to here and then start again because you don't want to kind of mess up the cardstock. So hopefully that explains what we're doing. So I'm gonna just fold and burnish these score lines just so you can make this out a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take my ruler Again with my stylus and I'm going to score from the top three inch right across down to the bottom of the nine inch score line. Place your stylus down first and then the ruler next to it. Okay and now I'm going to score from the top of the nine inch all the way across down to the bottom of the three inch. So now we're going to do this square here. So what you want to do is mark, so the whole piece is 12 inches, you want to mark it 6 inches, so this, the middle of that whole piece. So just a little marker there at 6, and again at the bottom here. 
And now you're going to score from the six inch down to that middle score line that you've ran between the three and the nine. So if I show you on here, that's where we've just done our six inch marker. You're going to score across down to this part here, which is the middle of this nine inch score line. And then you're going to score down to that one then back up to the other end of this piece, this or this score line, and then back up again to the top. So you're creating that square all within this bigger square or diamond shape. And now we're gonna cut right through that middle. So I like to use this ruler here because then I know I'm not gonna cut my fingers. And a nice sharp knife, you're going to sit the ruler down right on that centre line and make sure it's a metal ruler and you want to push your cutting knife into the ruler. Try and do it in one go, like so. So now we've got this piece freed up. What you now want to do is you want, you want all of these score lines here to become valley folds and then all of these other score lines will be mountain folds. And if you stick with that, then you know you get your folding correct. So we're going to start off here with our valley folds. And again, valley fold, a valley fold and a valley fold. Okay. All of those other score lines now are going to become mountain folds. So I'm going to fold across, just start pinching everything. So I'm just going to fold across all of like the diamond, like so. And then again, kind of open it up, but you know, eventually you want them to all go back to the folds that I just said, but just start to, so already now you can see, because this one's a valley and this one's a valley, those are all mountain folds. Can you see you're starting to get that, that side already coming together. So if I go down to this one, just take your time with it. Do a test run on some scrap card first, if you would rather, so you can get used to, you know, where the folds need to be. If your score lines aren't that deep, go back over them. Once you put them in place, go back over them with your scoreboard. And now you can see how that one's come together. And just repeat that on the bottom so now you should be able to fold the whole thing under like so and you've got your six by six card size how cool is that and then when it opens up it will all stand up now what you can do is just go back in. I'm just going to go over all of those folds with my burnishing tool here. I just want to get this point a little bit sharper. I'm just going to work those score lines a little bit more. There we go. That's much better. Once you burnish them, you can see you get a much nicer point. So now we can start decorating. So I've got my mats and layers here. So I've got silver mats for the sides there and then using the papers i've taken the border print there and i'm going to layer those on top so these are the silver's two and three quarters by five and three quarters and the pattern paper is two and a half so i'm going to stick those down first and then i've got two of the same size as the silver to go on the the reverse sides and that's my space to write my message so i'm going to get all that stuck down first and then i'll go through all the mats and layers for the smaller sections so that's those all stuck down i've then got myself these two i think were there and then i've taken the papers just the plain part to layer on top so those are one and seven eighths squared and then these are one and five eighths squared so again, I'm going to stick those down. I've gone for plain there because that's where I'm going to start to build up this little floral arrangement. I've then got two pieces of one and three quarter squared. And these ones you want to cut in half from point to point. So you've got four 
triangles. And these are going to go on these four sides. One, two, three, four. So you want to stick those ones down. I've then got another four pieces of one and three quarter squared. And these ones you want to cut in half and then in half again. And they're going to cover two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen of those smaller triangles. So point to point. And then if you pop the long uh, flat side in your trimmer, bring it all the way along until the point is in, is in line with your blade and then cut. Okay, so they're all stuck down. I've then cut myself two squares that are one and three eighths of an inch squared. And then again, cut on the diagonal and they are gonna cover each of these large squares here. So I'm gonna stick those down next. Next, you wanna cut yourself four squares that are seven, inch, seven eighths of an inch squared. And you're just gonna cut these on the diagonal like so. And then they will fit perfectly in those small ones there. So you would have just seen me decorate it. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to just add some glaze. You could add some little like flat back pearls, I think, in the centres of the flowers. But I kind of, I, I don't want to take away the colour. So I'm just going to add quite a large blob of the glaze there. And then when that dries clear, it will have quite a nice dimension to it as well. In fact, I think I'm going to do all of these in the paper as well. So it kind of ties it all together. There we go. It's going to take a little bit longer to dry, but I think it will be worth it. It looks really quite cool, I think. You can see there. So thank you for watching today. I've thoroughly enjoyed making this card and hopefully the template and the scoring, you know, made sense. I will take a photo of that and pop it onto my blog as well when I get around to doing it. I will link all of the product as always in the description box below. I will link the single version of this card side style that I've got coming up now along with another kind of triangular pointy card that you might want to watch next like I said all of the product that I've used will be listed below and if you've enjoyed today give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel click that little notification bell and that way you won't miss out on any future tutorials see you all again soon bye